So once, mm-hmm. you know, the program's over, they're like, okay, cool, I can cruise, I can relax. And eventually they go back to the, the way they're eating and drinking, the pounds start come back on, and then they're like, oh shoot, I need to get back on track and get back in shape. Are you hungry? Are you eating out of true physical hunger? Or is it psychological hunger because you're bored, you're stressed, you just want to do something to pass the time. The intentions are there, like you want to do good, you want to be perfect, but the brain's going to want to fight you. The brain doesn't like to change. It likes to be where it's at. I don't want to get too dogmatic with nutrition strategies. It should be customized based on on you and what helps you in long-term success. So my job is to not get the to rinse and repeat this endless cycle of diet. Hey everyone, today we're joined by my good friend, Tim Liu. He's an online fitness and nutrition coach based out in Los Angeles. He helps busy men and women lose fat and build muscle without having to live in the gym. Tim specifically teaches his clients to not only lose the weight, but to keep it off through sustainable habits. So we're going to do a deep dive about that all important topic today. And make sure to stick around until the end because Tim is going to drop some knowledge bombs on how to stay on track during the holidays. Before we get started, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to get notified every time I post a new video every week. It really helps support my channel. All right, let's get into it. Tim, Tim Liu, thanks for hopping on the call. How's it going, man? It's going well. Tim, a few sentences. Tell us who you are and uh, what do you do? Okay, so I am an online fitness and nutrition coach. I live out here in LA. Uh, I help busy men and women lose fat, build muscle without having to live in the gym. I help them create sustainable habits so they can not only lose the fat, but to keep it off because that's a big struggle people have. They'll go on you know, a diet or a challenge. They, they crush it, they get, you know, some results and then, you know, they go back to their old way of eating and drinking work or not working out and they regain the weight back. So my job is to not get them to rinse and repeat this endless cycle of dieting. For sure. Talk to me about that, Tim. What causes people to lose the weight? I've always said that we don't have a weight loss problem in this industry. We have a weight regain and weight loss sustainability problem. What, where's the gap there? You know, a lot of people are motivated for weight loss because, you know, they want to you know, feel good, look good, or they have a deadline in which they need to be in shape for whether it's a wedding or another event. Once that, you know, they've hit the milestone, a lot of the issues that dieters run into is that the programs that they're on, they don't teach them a way to transition out of the diet. Um, they also don't teach them how to build a habit. So once, mm-hmm. you know, the program's over, they're like, okay, cool. I can cruise. I can relax. And eventually they go back to the, the way they're eating and drinking, you know, the way the pounds start come back on. And then they're like, oh shoot, I need to get back on track and, you know, get back in shape. And they re-enter the same program, not knowing, not realizing that they haven't picked up any learning lessons from what they did. Um, and they're just redoing the same thing. Like whether it's crash dieting, whether it's cutting out all food groups, whether it's going cold turkey on alcohol or whatever, it just continues on for years on end. And they're regaining and losing the same 10, five, 10 pounds back and forth. And they're just spinning their wheels, not getting anywhere. Tim, you literally just described the definition of yo-yo dieting, (laughs) (laughs) right? And it's so common. It's so frustrating. Tim, give me your overarching diet philosophy, if you will. Yeah. So you know, what does my, it really take? It takes a true lifestyle change. Um, you need to, you know, learn the skills. You need to learn, you know, the right portion sizes on, you know, with your meals. Uh, it also takes learning how to be in touch with your body, learning um, cues, whether it's hunger. Uh, like if it's, are you hungry? Are you eating out of true physical hunger or is it psychological hunger because you're bored you're stressed you just want to do something to pass the time so a lot of people aren't in touch with their bodies and getting them to realize oh i'm i'm eating out of stress oh i'm just eating you know chips and popcorn because i'm just bored or you know i just need to fulfill a need of some kind so getting the person to figure out the difference between the two, making that switch and to create habits to rewire those old patterns is the biggest thing. 
uh, from my clients and some of the work that I do with them. Talk to me about that, Tim. Talk to you about, you know, habits. How does somebody get started with, you know, building better habits for themselves? You know, what's a good place to start in your opinion? A good place to start is to go after the low hanging fruit, something that's so easy on paper that you can do. Uh, a mm-hmm. lot of people make the mistake of going all out, all in, changing everything. Uh, you know, all of, you know, the, the intentions are there. Like you want to do good. You want to be perfect, but the brain's going to want to fight you. Um, the brain doesn't like to change. It likes to be where it's at. Uh, it likes to be comfortable. So even though it seems so easy, uh, I tell my clients, Hey, let's drink more water. Let's go for a couple walks. Uh, let's start with eating just, you know, one vegetable, especially if they haven't eaten vegetables. So true. Yeah, for the past year and a half. The goal is to make it sustainable, achievable, and we can scale from then on out. So once you've mastered a habit, whether it's eating a lean protein, drinking more water, getting more steps, we're nailing it for two weeks, then we move on to the next thing. Whatever. Totally. I understand. Yeah, I am so obsessed, Tim. I totally agree with what you just said about just keeping it simple. Go after that lowest hanging fruit. And I'm so obsessed with building credibility within yourself by just focusing on smaller wins, right? So in terms of diet, Tim, let's say you focus on, let's say you said one vegetable, talk to me about that a little bit more. Like what can people go after with their diet that would yield big results right away? So they can feel like they're winning. They feel, they feel good about it. Totally. Okay. So, um, a lot of my clients are busy. Uh, sometimes they go to events where they have no control over what the food choices may be. I mm-hmm. tell them so common. Yeah. I'm like, Hey, listen, if you know, the food available to you, isn't the best. Remember that portion size is the most important thing when it comes to events like this. So let's say if you're used to eating as an example, you know, three slices of pizza, if you only eat one to two slices and you're drinking mostly water and maybe you pick out the protein in like a starchy salad or pasta, I'm going to consider that a win because you've upgraded your food choices, and you've done better for yourself. You know, on paper, it might not seem like much, but psychologically, it creates momentum for you to keep that going for your future meals. And for because sure. you're eating less, you know, you're in a calorie deficit, you're, it's going to help you move towards weight loss, fat loss. I'm glad you mentioned calories. What do you think of uh, counting calories and macros? Where does it play a role, you know, in this pyramid that we're building here? Initially, for most people, Calories and protein is the most important. Uh, we don't want to get caught up in the macro split because when you're just starting off, you don't want to overcomplicate things because you and I were more, you know, advanced in, in nutrition. We can be more specific with our carb intake, with our fat intake and kind of moving around the macro split on th- certain days. But if you're just mm-hmm. starting out portion size, getting a lean protein, that's the most important thing. I tell clients, Hey, when you're tracking your food initially, don't get caught up with all these other numbers. As long as we're in a calorie deficit, we're cool. Totally. I agree. Calorie deficit while focusing on satiety is probably the most important thing in all of this, in my opinion. You've mentioned lean protein a couple of times, Tim. Talk to me about that. Talk to me about the importance of you know making sure that you're getting adequate and quality protein um, in every meal. Yeah, for sure. So I tell my clients, hey, with each meal, try to get at least a serving size of protein. For men, it's about two fistfuls or two sides of your palms, um, which is about six to eight ounces. For women, love it. at least three to four ounces. We want to make sure they're from leaner sources because we, uh, we don't want any extra fats from fattier cuts. Like you want to go for chicken breast, chicken thigh over, let's say fatty ribs or ribeye as delicious as it may be. We don't want any extra calories coming in, uh, lean protein. It helps you boost your metabolism, helps you feel satiated. helps you feel full longer and it, uh, helps rebuild and build, maintain your lean muscle, especially if you're going to be strength training, working out, being active. So most of us under eat protein anyway. So it's a good way to. Oh my food. goodness. And I, yeah, no, I'm glad that you brought that up. I totally agree that a lot of people severely under eat on protein. And there's even a movement today to kind of really cut down on our intake of animal protein, which I just think is one of the worst pieces of advice that you could ever give to anyone. Anyway, um, what's a common diet or exercise trap that you see a lot of people make? 
uh, a common exercise and diet trap that people make. Okay, so going back to just starting off their fitness journey, people are motivated, they wanna go all in. So they ramp up their physical activity and they lower their food intake as much as possible. Mm. So they're like, okay, I need to get in shape by like four to, in four to six weeks. Okay, I'm gonna blast it. I'm gonna go super low carb. I'm gonna cut my calories really low and I'm just gonna work out every day. I'm gonna do tons of cardio. Going back to the intentions, like your intentions are good, but if you drop your calories too much, your brain, your bodys it's way smarter than you think. It's going to downregulate. Your <laughs> it's going to lower, it's going to slow things down because our body's built for survival. And if you're doing all these things, they're like, oh, okay, we need to make sure that we're hanging on to as much energy as we can to sustain ourselves to survive. And your metabolism is going to slowly slow down to make up for these adaptations. So instead of dropping a thousand calories, which some people get super gung ho about, like eating 1200 calories or less. I can't believe start- people do that. Damn, I'm, I'm blown away when, when people do that. And I'm even shocked when their coach or dietitian or trainer tells them to eat 1200 calories a day. Talk to me a little bit more about that. <laughs> so uh, people want to go, you know, their intentions are good and they want to go all in. And I have to rein it back for some of my clients. So like, should I just eat 12, 1500 calories? Then I'm like, right now you're eating 25. If you slash a thousand calories, you're going to be hungry. You're going to be irritable. You're going to be cranky. Uh, add that on top of all the extra volume of exercising you're doing. That's going to be a recipe for disaster. Like my goal is to 100%. make this sustainable long-term. I don't want you to crash and burn. Sure. You might see some initial wins the first two weeks. So like, yeah, I dropped five pounds. Cool. But there's no way you can maintain that. It's not sustainable. You're going to get burnt out. You're going to get discouraged. You're going to regain the weight and you're going to have to do this all over again. Um, Back to yo-yo dieting. <laughs> yeah. So starting off, I say, Hey, let's make this doable for both of us. Let's say, let's start off with at least, you know, at least three workouts a week, three workouts, On your off days, go for walks, do your cardio of your choice, whatever, get active. And then we're just going to start with a smaller deficit. And then we're just going to cruise our way down. You know, I have to rain, I have to rain people back because they're so used to cutting everything out and just going hard. All or nothing, right? All or nothing. It's so common. It's such a common trap. Tim, okay. Talk to me about cheat meals. Where, how can people, especially with the holiday season coming up here, how can people kind of incorporate cheat meals into their plan without kind of getting off the rails, if you will. Yeah, I think with cheat meals, we have to reframe it. um, Because if you call it a cheat meal, psychologically, it's like, oh, hey, this is my meal to go all out and just be a complete glutton, you know? Um, Yeah. Instead of thinking, I get a cheat meal, you know, I get a meal where I get to indulge a little bit where I get to enjoy some of my favorite foods. Within reason, you're not just stuffing yourself silly uh, because you just feel gross afterwards um, and it doesn't feel good when you're done the next day you're just bloated and you just want to like burn everything off um, psychologically it can't be very hard for somebody especially if they've been a dieter so I say hey enjoy yourself you know pick one indulgence um, have your portion size within reason and then the next meal just get back on track that way you erase some of the guilt Um, and shame associated with having a a cheat meal and it makes them feel better long-term. They'll they'll be like, okay, I'll bounce back, whatever. Uh, I might see like maybe a a pound or two gain on the scale and that's fine because, you know, it could be salt, extra water retention. It's not fat, like a, like a meal where you get to enjoy yourself. You're not going to regain all the fat that you've burned um, in the past. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, no. So that's how I view cheat meals. Absolutely. I always also tell my clients that, listen, you know, it doesn't make you a bad person. If you have a slice of pizza, you you didn't kill anyone, right? (laughs) Like it doesn't really erase all the hard work and, you know, all the good things that you put in throughout the week. And I love the fact that you said that uh, we need to reframe the name, right? It doesn't make you a bad person. If you had some ice cream or, you know, a slice of pizza at a party, as long as, you know, just be sensible about it, right? Like don't, you can have one slice, just don't eat 
the entire box. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right. And, totally. and at the same time, I love that you said, uh, just forget about it the next day. I like to call it selective amnesia, where you kind of just, you know, it happened the night before. The last thing that you want to do is feel bad about that food decision and start beating yourself up about it. I feel like that's kind of where a lot of people start to go sideways mm-hmm. with it. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. The psychology behind it is huge. Oh my God. My God. Yeah. I think, you know, it gets to a point where for a lot of people, because it's easy to look up information on the internet, man, like one quick Google search and you'll find hundreds of millions of uh, search results in terms of uh, how to lose weight. But I feel like it really gets to a point where weight loss is really all in your head. For sure. It's easy to, to learn the calories, macros, workout part, but you also have to address the the mental, the mindset, the psychological part too. That's what helps you have long-term success. Totally. Um, Yeah, just building a better relationship with yourself, I think is where a lot of people should start and work on at the same time as well. Mm -hmm. Tim, talk to me about, uh, what do you think of intermittent fasting? Where where does it play a role in all of this? It's just another tool. Uh, It depends what your lifestyle is and how you do with meal frequency. You know, there are health benefits to fasting. Um, but a lot of the benefits don't kick in until the 16 hour and beyond. So if you want to do a longer fast and it works for you, cool. I think that for some people, it can be great because it gives them, uh, guidelines on when they can eat. It, it gives them more structure if they're not used to it. Um, for busy people who don't have time to eat or, or whatever, it can be a great strategy. Like some of my clients, they, they skip breakfast. They just have a cup of coffee and they, ju- they just work from 8 a.m. to like noon. Then they'll have their first meal at noon. And then they'll have uh, maybe another mid snack and then like dinner. And that's cool. And it works for them. Other people, for some reason, women don't respond as well to intermittent fasting. Maybe it's a hormonal thing, but they need to have more frequent meals, like three or four meals a day. So it all really depends on your lifestyle, your metabolic hormonal profile, and if it works for your lifestyle. Uh, It's just another tool. I don't want to get too dogmatic with nutrition strategies. It should be customized based on on you and what helps you in long-term success. Totally. I love that you call it a tool. I think uh, where a lot of people go wrong with intermittent fasting is they hear about all the benefits of fasting. They think it's like the greatest thing ever and they start doing it, but they don't really change their diet all that much. And, you know, I always tell my clients, like, it doesn't give you free reign to just start eating whatever you want in your, let's say you do a 16 hour fast. You mentioned it doesn't give you just the green light to just go to town, go on the seafood diet, you see food, you eat it on your eight hour eating window. It's it's still a long time to get in um, a lot of, of food, especially if your diet isn't on point. So yeah, I think people just Uh, should use it as a tool, but it shouldn't be kind of just your be all and all strategy when it comes to weight loss. Um, Tim, talk to me about the importance of strength training. You mentioned, you know, people should kind of aim for three days a week. Mm -hmm. Um, Talk to me about that. So if you're trying to lose fat, get lean, ramp up your metabolism, you have to do some form of strength training. Uh, A lot of people make the mistake when they're on their fat loss journey, just doing cardio and maybe some sit-ups, crunches. There's nothing wrong with those activities, but the problem is the biggest, most important thing when you're dieting or or trying to lose fat is to build and maintain as much lean muscle as possible Mm -hmm. because that's what's going to keep you healthy. That's what's going to help you keep the weight off. It's Muscle is basically the fountain of youth, and all of us needs to, especially as we get older, we have to hang on and build as much of it as possible. So true. Yeah. So when you're just starting off, um, I would recommend at least, you know, three strength training workouts a week. If you're a newbie, you can ride the newbie gains and just do full body workouts, just hitting every muscle group. That's going to go a long way. Just maximize as much activity as you can in the weight room, you know, focusing on compound movements, squats, pushing, pulling, hinge, deadlift, uh, movements, exercises, and that's going to help you know, not only help you build the muscle, it also burns more calories than traditional cardio. So if you do that, you're going to be successful in your fat loss goals. 
I love that you mentioned that it burns more calories long term over cardio because, you know, muscle is a very energy expensive tissue to build and maintain. I always say that muscle is your mechanism of health. It's what pays for the dance, if you will, right? At yeah. the same time as well, I always tell all my clients that muscle is your metabolic currency. The more of it that you have, the more you get to eat, right? The more you can get away with, if you will. Um, so it's <laughs> it's so important, man. I can't emphasize that enough. And I'm, I love that you brought up some simple movements, focus on compound movement. Is there one movement? Do you have a favorite movement that you kind of tell people that like, hey, just integrate this one exercise, one movement to your routine, and it'll yield some pretty amazing results. It's hard to break it down <laughs> into one movement, but um, I would say most people can start off with like, you know, dumbbell squats. Cause a lot of people don't hit their legs. Um, you can, you know, load in the front. It's easy to learn. Uh, if you're not used to squatting, having that weight in front of you, it forces you into a proper squat pattern. You could do it for higher reps, work on your strength endurance. You can go heavier on it, work on more strength. It's a pretty versatile, simple movement that anybody can do for sure. And, you know, Talk about uh, functional, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in exactly. terms of being able to use in everyday life, you know, you want to be able to get out of bed, get out of a chair with, uh, you know, no help, right? Mobility, especially as people get older, is becomes uh, more crucial. Um, Tim, what's working well for you right now and all your clients? Uh, one thing that works for my clients is having a schedule. Uh, when you put time aside to focus on your health and fitness, it's official. So it's an obligation for you to, to do because, you know, it's easy to look at your calendar and be like, okay, I'm busy at work. Um, and then before you know it, the day's almost over and you're like, oh, I'll put off until tomorrow. So having time set for yourself to focus on your health and wellness as a way of self-care um, is huge. That's been helping my clients. I love that you said that, Tim, because, you know, I always tell people you should be your number one priority. We make plans with other people. We make an appointment with our doctor and we do our best to honor that appointment. But for some reason, for some reason, <laughs> when it comes to making time and scheduling things for ourselves, we are so we're so sketchy about it. We always just make up, you know, lame excuses and we always put other people ahead of us. And I always say, no, you're the asset. You need to prioritize yourself in all of this, right? You only have one body. You have to take care of it. Mm -hmm, totally. So Tim, um, you've already dropped some incredible knowledge today. So thank you so much for that. Um, is there anything that, that you want to talk about that I haven't brought up yet? Hmm, let's see. We've gone over a lot of stuff, already. We've <laughs> gone over habits. We've gone over strength training. Well, with the holidays coming up, we can kind of go over how to stay fit over the holidays. Sure. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Give me some tips. Okay. So um, I know you're in Canada and I'm in America. <laughs> so right now uh, in about two weeks, we've got Thanksgiving where we like to feast. There's a lot of celebrations. And then next month we've got Christmas. So there's going to be a lot of events involving food, drink, calories, and it's easy to let your habits fall to the wayside because you've got all these social things speaking of calendar and being busy so um a lot of this is the time when a lot of people around the world tend to gain weight and the goal for some of my clients is if you can just maintain it with everything that's going on that's going to be a plus that's going to be a win so during this time uh since we talked about habits you need to build and maintain them as much as you can so if you're not working out don't wait until January because you're going to fight a, a bigger uphill battle. You're going to be part of the resolutioners. And, you know, it, it sucks to say it, but a lot of people who start their fitness resolutions don't, you know, follow through with it and they don't succeed. So we need to make sure percent is the stat. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's sad. Um, so during this time, uh, like we talked about, we need to maintain habits. So pick the lowest hanging fruit, things you could do. Uh, that don't require a lot of mental energy. So it's drinking more water, going on walks, getting in a couple workouts. And before you go to an event, uh, whether it's eating or drinking with family, friends, whatever, you want to make sure that you get active earlier in the day. And if you can't eat a small meal in, uh, involving a lean protein and veggie, so then you kind of give yourself a little bit of a, a buffer going in. You're not as hungry. You're not as inclined to feast as much. Um, Love it. And then on the next day, just get back on track, get in the workout 
and then we're right on schedule. That's how I would try to stay fit over the holidays. I love it. Those are some really good points there. Um, Tim, if you could go back in time, mm-hmm. you know, if you can get to do a little do over, what's one piece of advice that you would give to your former self? Hmm, okay. If I were to go back 10 years ago, 10 plus mm-hmm. years ago, before, you know, as I was all start, starting this fitness journey, I would say to... By the way, guys, Tim has an epic epic before picture that you guys have to check out <laughs> it's so epic it's not even funny anyway go ahead if i thank you if i were to go back and do this all over again i would tell myself don't go into such extremes yes i lost the fat um but i also went into like a full bone bulking stage and just got fat again and <laughs> i spent a lot of time trying to lose the fat and and keep my gains so If you're trying to bulk up, go for a a low, a smaller calorie surplus, just like how Mm -hmm. you would with the calorie deficit. Don't slash your calories, just go with a small decrease and just work your way down because this is, you know, a lifestyle change. It's not something you can just achieve in eight to 12 weeks. For sure. And you are the king of being able to maintain your results. Tim, thanks for uh, coming on. (laughs) Thanks for uh, coming on the show today. For people that want to find out more about you, where can people find you? Okay. So you can find me on Instagram. You can find me at Tim Lou Fitness. I have a website as well, timloufitness.com. I have a five-day fat loss course if you sign up for my newsletter. So it's right there uh, on the front page. Uh, feel free to drop me an email. My name, Tim at Tim Lou Fitness. Shoot me a DM on Instagram and uh, yeah, we can chat whatever you need. Awesome. Tim, thanks for coming on the call again. We'll talk to you soon. The next question then becomes... How and what are you actually supposed to eat if you want to lose weight? Because 80% of your body composition is determined by your diet. This is also where a lot of people go wrong. Do you have a proven plan that you can follow? To help you with that, I want to give you a free copy of my Lean Body Blueprint. This is how I was finally able to get rid of all my stubborn fat without depriving myself of my favorite foods or spending countless hours doing cardio. It's a simple and proven four-step process specifically designed for busy professionals like you. And it's also the exact same blueprint that I teach to all my coaching clients and they've all gone to see some amazing results. If you want to be the next success story, then download your free copy of the Lean Body Blueprint right now. There's going to be a link somewhere at the top here or in the description box. Just click on it, type in your email, and I'll send it to you right away. Hey, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post a new video every week. And feel free to comment below if you have any questions about this video. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Virtual high five.